Welcome to Digital Asset News, take the top stories in crypto and bring them out of bite-sized pieces. So today, what I want to share with you is I think something that is, is overlooked by the masses and something that I think is super important if we just understand how to do it. And that is called on-chain analysis. Thankfully for us, I had Ki Young Ju. I reached out to him. He's the CEO of CryptoQuant. And I asked him to be on the show just to teach me and everybody uh, that's watching this video exactly how to use on-chain analysis. So Ki, man, I got to say, thanks so much for coming on. I think it's going to be a lifesaver for a lot of people. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, no problem. So just uh, so just real quick, anybody who doesn't know uh, Key, uh, he is uh, one of the top people in blockchain technology in the top 100, as rated by Cointelegraph. Uh, he's a CEO of South Korean on-chain and analytics resource, CryptoQuant. And it's the, it is the on-chain analysis I've been using pretty much exclusively when I talk about my three favorite ones, which is uh, uh, mining or what miners are selling, uh, the ETH and how much is actually on the exchanges as well as Bitcoin, what's on, what's on the exchanges. So, so Key, just real quick before we get going, tell us why did you start CryptoQuant for on-chain analysis? Because I got to tell you, uh, to me, some, some of the thing is pretty confusing. So I'm glad you're here. So, but why did you start CryptoQuant? So I was uh, just um, ape trader. <laughs> 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 Um, since since two two years ago, because oh, yeah. uh, people just have religious belief and there's no databases. They just trade, right? Yes. Can start chart looks good and then just buy it. So I was that kind of trader, uh -huh. um, and I lose a lot of money. Um, got liquidated a hundred times, and then I realized that okay, I need some data databases um, to make more profit trading um, yeah. for profit trading. So that's why I um, started this data business for uh, retail investors. Great. Um, so actually, uh, I was running a company to um, build anti-money laundering solution. So okay. we, we've been closely working with Korean police, Korean prosecutor services, to investigate money laundering cases. So we actually solved a lot of um, money laundering cases before. Um, okay. So we have on-chain data a lot, especially address, la address labels. So we, yeah, that's where, where we started. Perfect. And then and then not to interrupt, but, but my thought is this, we have a big problem here in America with uh, some politicians saying that blockchain and digital asset technology will is going to lead to illicit activity so you know that's good to see that somebody can say no it does the exact opposite and it's where things are going and it actually uh the bad guys don't really want to put all their transactions on a public blockchain it makes no sense so makes sense to me key thanks sorry keep going so yeah um that's where i started and after i started starting this business Mm -hmm. I have some kind of my standards mm -hmm. about how to invest. And yeah. these standards are really helpful because mm, trading is all about scenarios. You have to have data, insights to back up your scenario. Right. Yeah. So based on those data, you, you can build um, the price movement a scenario about price movement and mm -hmm. then um if you set up those scenarios um you your your thoughts your trading would be more solid you're not gonna take your uh realize your loss when yeah. just those peep saws fall trades are happening like yes can can you remember yesterday yesterday was crazy like price was <laughs> yeah for 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 a little recap because people are going to be either watching this on youtube or they're going to be watching it dan teaches crypto.com is that uh today is november 11th 2021 and yesterday was november 10th and what we saw was a pretty big dip uh from bitcoin reaching an all-time high i want to say it hit 69,000, 68 69 000, yeah. somewhere on there and almost immediately uh, there, you, you saw a lot of whale action, people selling because once it hits all-time highs, then whew, just took a big, uh, a big dip, a big uh, dip, which is not a big uh, thing in crypto, but 
That's what happened. 62K. Yeah, from 69 to 62K. Pretty big deal. And if you're not uh, familiar with these swings, this is a scary time. But for crypto, it's just a Wednesday. So, yeah. All right. So, Key, you were telling us uh, this makes a lot of sense. You wanted to create something that could actually help you as a trader because you were losing a bunch of money here and there. So let's get into the data. The big thing I brought you on here is why do we need on-chain analysis? And what does Key, the CEO of CryptoQuant, look at every single day to make trades profitable? So, Key, I'm going to pull up uh, your website, CryptoQuant. Show us, first of all, what we should be looking at and, and go through it. So the first one is taker by volume. Okay. So, so I've got that in my favorite because I cheated <laughs> and you told me uh, what, which, which is a good one. So it's this one. Let me pull this on full screen. So talk to us about this. Taker by volume. Yeah. Can you click um, minute chart? Okay, Key. So it's on the minute. Now what are we looking at? You, you can see taker by volume skyrocketed. And if you see hourly data okay let me switch to the hourly real quick so i got you so it's it's an inversion so it looks like when you've got a massive amount of of uh of buy volume mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. price seems to it's like like right here like if we see this this yeah, big yeah. huge spike huge bounce right right so those dips are pretty much manipulated you know what i mean so right they they just make a dip and then buy a huge amount of Bitcoin through the market order. So when these data skyrocketed, the price is likely to go up in the long term. And if those those buying were not from cascade liquidations like short short squeeze, um, right? That, that would be great. Um, it, it's healthy buying. So you can compare. Um, these with short uh, short liquidations data. So there was a 1.6 billion worth Bitcoin buying before ETF approval. Um, Taker take buy volume skyrocketed, and price was went from 52k to 60k right away. But there was no short liquidity. Um, there was short liquidations looks pretty flat, and buy volume skyrocketed. These are pure buying. So these kind of whale buying activities are um, uh, happen happens when they want whales want to um, keep support uh, like 60k support. There was huge buying when the price touches um, 60k every time. So I specifically I set an alert for this for the threshold is two hundred fifty million dollars. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So it's it looks to me like if you're looking at because I remember this time frame. I remember even James over to Best Answer said that he had some buy orders in exactly as it hit the sixty k support level because everything started to get gobbled up at that price level. Either that was by TA or by design. Or just you know, like I say, like big whale activity. But it's interesting to note that if you can take a look at your your technical analysis, then come over here and say, look, every time at 60k it gets bought up, and here's the volume. Well, it can just reaffirm what you've been thinking, be, become a little bit better of a trader. Sounds good. Yeah, my scenario was um, whales who bought Bitcoin at 60k. Um, they want more profit. Like they they can't be satisfied just five for five or you know three to five percent profit yeah, right right so they want to go more so i think we um the price really is likely to um continue but the i'll, I'll explain this later but the market is pretty over over leveraged so i, I would recommend the tones use over leverage on your lungs. Gotcha. Okay. So the the one that we should be looking at for sure is all exchange taker by taker by volume. They can find that crypto quant. And when things start to when you see this 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 volume increase, expect the prices to go 
little bit decrease? Um, the price is likely to go up in the long term. In the long term. But yeah. so when you see something like, like this, in the long term, it'll go up. Okay. So now we've got that one. What's the next one we should take a look at? Estimated leverage ratio. Okay. This one was an interesting one because I hadn't been looking at that. Just I'd just been looking at uh, just the amount of leverages that happen just by market. So we're taking a look at leverage ratio. Let's make this full screen. Show us, talk to us about this one. This this data is calculated by open interest divided by exchange balance, which okay. is used by collateral. So that's why it's estimated leverage ratio. So okay. The absolute value is not important. Uh, it's it's important to see the trend and come relatively how those trend changes. So when this value goes above like zero point one eight, right, like really high, right around here, yeah. yeah, which is now it's super high. Speaking super of which, high. It, it just hit all time high. Oh so, no. <laughs> the price is likely to plunge or um, go go up by cascade liquidations. So mm. we'll see volatility um, in the short term by cascade liquidations. Right. Um, can you mouse over, uh, move your mouse closer uh, when those value peaks? Like right here? Like at uh, two yeah, before, before that, like September. Yeah, that one. That one oh, was local top, right? Right. And before that one, um, it was local bottom, and I it's see. specifically predicted, um, the dip, uh, a lot predicted local local top on May as well. Yeah, and then here. And then Interesting. So we know that since we're at an all-time high for the estimated leverage ratio, expect some extreme volatility right now. I think there's a lot of whales in play, thinking that either it's gonna they're gonna they're gonna go short, they're gonna go long, and there's gonna be somebody who gets liquidated like crazy. And then before you know it, you're gonna see a lot of people losing a lot of money. That's how I see it. Yeah. Okay. Got that one. So key, what's the next one we should be looking at every day? Next one is Exchange reserve. Yes. And this is the one that I talk about like all the time. Let's just take a look at real quick uh, the Bitcoin exchange reserve. So one of the reasons why I liked your company was because when I signed up for it for a trial, uh, you guys had a nice little email um, autoresponder set up. And you would just say, look at these. And this is what it's for. And just set this up like so. So like this one made it made a lot of sense to me. The more that uh, the exchange reserve, meaning the amount of Bitcoin that is on the exchange, as it starts to plummet because people take off Bitcoin, that means they don't want to sell it because they're taking it off the uh, the exchange. Usually the price goes up pretty high. This one looks, there's a pretty wide variance in this one. I haven't seen this like this. Oh, this is per the day. I see. Okay. But yeah. So we had a massive amount of people putting their Bitcoin around October on the exchanges, probably selling a little bit. Then they sort of take it off and the price follows, correct? Yeah. So yeah. exchange Bitcoin balance is kind of sell side liquidity, sell, sell side liquidity. Right. So uh, when you decide to sell Bitcoin, you have to send your Bitcoins to exchanges. So if you zoom in on um, the most recent data, you can see whales accumulation through um, OTC deals. So basically institutions like MicroStrategy, they, yeah. um, they at request um, buy, to buy some Bitcoins through some brokerage firm like Coin Coinbase Prime. And right. then these guys um, buying Bitcoins really quite quietly. And then they send a huge amount of Bitcoins to Coinbase custody wallets, which is not labeled by exchanges. So mm. these, um, we, we, we've been seeing a massive exodus from exchanges to custody wallets um, 
last year, and then price like going up skyrocketed. Mm -hmm. And then when selling pressure started to go up, um, exchange reserve was going up. And if you see the late, latest data, it it keep decreasing, right? So right. we'll see. Uh, I, I assume the second bull run just started. Okay. Yeah, I like that. I like that news. Yeah, because as we as we start to see that people are like, okay, I'm going to take it off the exchanges into the custody. And if it's micro strategy, you know, it's not leaving those custody wallets. They're going to keep it for, uh, per Michael Saylor, a uh, very, very long time until I guess the end of time. So if we see that and we have the same demand, but not the same uh, supply because it goes down, price usually follows. Okay. And then if we, so that was that piece. And then, I mean, we can see, we can see the same exact thing uh, also as well. I like to take a look at the uh, Ethereum, all exchange reserves as well, just because, just to see where Ethereum's going and where Ethereum's going is up. I can just, it's, it's even more pronounced here. Key, what do you see here? Um, so Ethereum reserve was keep, um, keep declining because, uh, because of, um, thriving web three apps. Yes. And so if you see, if you compare those data with Bitcoin reserve, Bitcoin reserve was like fluctuating or going sideways, but Ethereum reserve was keep, uh, keep de declining. Right. So yeah. that's true. Those, those Ethereum goes to um, smart contracts, for example, Ethereum 2.0, or you know, staking some DeFi projects. There are so many, so many use cases for Ethereum. That's why there are more Ethereum outflows. And it makes it makes total sense. It's what I've been talking about this channel for quite some time. If a project has, I mean, a good team, they have good people behind it, but also it has real world utility, it gets used, you're gonna see a scarcity and the price usually should go up. That makes a lot of sense. All right, and Key, what's the what's the next ones we should take a look at, or the last last ones we should take a look at? So last one is MVRV. Ah, all right. Market of value to realize value. This is the interesting one to me. So explain this to us. Why should we be looking at this every day? Oh, um, not every day, but this is all-time winning indicator. So when it, whenever this MVRV indicator goes below one, um, it was like lifetime buying opportunity um, because... Oh, yeah. Wow, look it, at those. <laughs> You're right. It's like global bottom. <laughs> I see. So this is, if you really want to take a look at what's the bottom... This could be it. And you're saying this is like a nice leading indicator. I mean, even if you, even if you hit this on a, a, so like this is the 13th of March when Bitcoin was $5,100. 18th of March, it was $6,100. Even if you just were like sleeping, you're like, I, I don't have time to check this. You're a couple of days late. Imagine buying it back here. And then of course it goes, and, and here was the bottom, bottom, bottom. 15th December, 2018. Oh, I remember those days, man. <laughs> This is yeah. actually, I told my wife, I, I go, if you're going to buy any, I bought it. I told her to buy around here around six grand because I, I missed it. But uh, she bought a, a bunch and everything worked out. I bought a bunch. Everything was good. I can see it. So how about over here? Now it's not at one. We're at like 1.6, but the value, it, it kind of matches up in July, 19th, July, 2021. And we were at 20. Oh, wow. 29,000. Huh? <laughs> yeah, those. This MVRV is calculated by market value, market cap divided by realized cap. Say that again, Key. It's it's the uh, it's market cap divided by divided by realized cap. Realized, realized cap. cap. Okay. And realized cap is calculated by um, supply multiply when whenever the transaction happens on uh, the realized price. So it'd be like, so like in this, in this situation, if you're seeing this, the uh, market value to realize value, it would see it go, you know, I mean, definitely uh, below, below, below where the actual price is, which was, I think about right here, actually, it kind of uh, jumped up. This is 12th. Yeah. 12th of April when we hit uh, one of the all time highs back then 63,000, but 
uh, the Bitcoin market value to realize value, I think was a little bit, well, a little bit lower. So maybe that was a good indicator of, hey, we actually hit a top. Am I seeing that right or am I seeing that wrong? Yeah, um, people, con people think if this value goes above 3.5, that's going to be a sell opportunity. Perfect. So, yeah. so we're looking at... I, I would recommend the send an alert for this. Um, How do we do that? This ought to be good. <laughs> Let me show you. Okay. So, show, so walk me through it. The, can we do it from right here, this little bell? Um, yeah, click the bell. Okay. And so. MBRB goes below one. Okay. Yeah. And that's it. Oh, you can click channels. Um, resolution is day. Resolution is day? Okay. Yeah, day. Type, recurring? Yep. Cool down? What's this? Oh, fire before I can fire again. Slow, okay. Yeah. And then channels. Oh, that's pretty great. Yeah, yeah. I can do email and browser. Very yeah. nice. And then the that's notes easy. I could put in here, which would be to... Lifetime buying opportunity. <laughs> Lifetime buying opportunity. Yeah. So when you said news major media says Bitcoin is dead and price like dip really hard, yeah, you, you might want to check MVRV. Got that. you. Hey, Key, what was the other one where it was above something? Above 4.3.5? 3.5. So 3.5. Yeah. A day recurring cooldown email. We've hit the top. <laughs> Sell. Okay, perfect. Now I'm good. Now I don't have to deal with this nonsense about uh, what happened in 2017 with me. All right, great. So close. Now, again, this is just financial opinion, not financial advice. The things that me and Key are talking about are just our beliefs and what is going on with the market. Of course, it's up to you to do your own research and to sell and buy what you think is good and when you think it is good for you and, of course, your family. So a little uh, nice, uh, get that out of the way first. So, Key, anything else we have to take a look at? Um, that's it for now, I think. Yeah, that's it for now. So what I'm going to say is this. Uh, that was a lot of information uh, compressed into a little bit of time. What we'll do is me and Key, we're going to do some more advanced training on on-chain analysis, which we will put uh, over to this website that's always above my head, danteachescrypto.com. And we'll put the basics uh, also, you're watching this on YouTube, but we'll also put this in Dan Teaches Crypto and we'll put that into the investing part. But uh, Key, that is uh, it for this one. I want to say thanks so much for your time. I've learned a lot. I think people will learn a lot. And this is just one of the things people should look at. It's a plethora of information that they should get out there. But before we take off, uh, two things. One, if you want to sign up for CryptoQuant, the link is in the description. Uh, it's uh, at the very top. You can check it all out. And then the second thing is, Key, do you have any words of wisdom for people experiencing this bull run for the first time? So I think the current market is over leveraged. So please don't yeah. use um, over leverage on your lungs. But it's a good time to buy through the spot market, not on um, derivative market. Um, because Whale ratio is too high, which can cause a lot of whipsaws um, and bull, bull trap. But eventually, price is likely to go up in the long term as yeah. exchange supply is um, decreasing. Got it. We, we, might, we might see a sell side liquidity shock um, in, in the long term. Let's hope so. Okay, awesome. So look, that's it for today. If you stuck with us all the way to the end, first of all, you're probably a smarter investor for doing it. Thanks so much. We appreciate it. Uh, hit the like button. Uh, if you liked the video, found some value, also consider subscribing. These things are going to come fast and furious, especially over the next weeks and months as this bull run hopefully continues. So thanks so much for watching. We appreciate it. And uh, me and Key will see you in the next one.